Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number two. This one's a honeycomb cord prepreg panel with a 15 millimeter Nomex core and 200 gram woven skins and a single ply of 300 gram unidirectional. Starting out by applying and debulking 150 gram glue film to the unidirectional. The panel is going to have the woven RC200 skins on the outsides with a single, pl single ply of 300 gram uni um, against the core and to make that easier I'm co-applying the glue film and debulking it right to that layer of carbon makes putting it against the core a lot easier um, and you get good adhesion between the skin and the core um, with a minimum of air and foaming and stuff like that here I'm cutting them out it's pretty cold where I'm working so the carbon is not sticky the resin is easy to deal with but they don't really want to stick together when it's warmer the glue film is a real hassle and it sticks to everything but I'm spiking the backer on the uni and trimming off any excess bits of glue film around the edge so that it doesn't stick to everything um, by perfing the uni with a spike roller that'll let air come out uh, when I debulk it. This is going to get a warm debulk so I'll bag it down to the table. Um, here is I've got a little table with adhesive Teflon on the top and for the debulking I'm just sealing the bag right to the Teflon around the perimeter which is a, a super easy way to deal with it. It comes up nicely um, putting a layer of green infusion mesh over the top to distribute the vacuum I'm trying to make sure I don't put a a kink in the material. Sealing it up uh, and pulling the vacuum on it. I'll let this sit under vacuum for 15 minutes or so after it's pulled down and I'm gonna put my little oven lid over the top which is just a box made of foil face foam that works pretty well to do basic heating and cooking um, it's super handy but it bears watching and this is not the kind of oven that you want to leave alone uh, unattended because there's a tremendous fire risk I'm gonna run it with a little hair dryer just now because I'm not gonna get it that hot so there's a thermocouple reader just to tell me what's going on and I'll set that through there prop it up and blast it in there for 15 minutes or so gets up to about 40 C now you can see I've peeled the backer back off the glue film and it's stuck beautifully without any air bubbles to the layer of 300 gram uni. So starting with a clean table, wiped it down and a debulk bag, I'm going to use the same one. I'll take this RC200, this is all Gurit prepreg. Um, SE84LV resin system. It's a nice low temp system that's relatively common. And I peeled off the backer side here, which helps it stick a little bit. Because it's cold, it's not wanting to stick. Um, once I debulk it, it will be down really nice. But I'm just going to give this first ply a squish for just a couple minutes and go over it with a heat gun just to run the resin a little bit and get it to stick down to the table. It's probably about 50 degrees Fahrenheit where I'm working in my cellar, so tack is not ideal. At a normal room temperature, none of this would be a problem. So I'll peel the debulk bag carefully back and set my mesh aside it's all pressed down really nicely. So now I'm going to take the second ply, which is the, the combination ply. It's easy to get the paper backer off, but I, I want to get the plastic off here. 
which will leave the resin film facing up and I'm going to leave that backer, paper backer right on the resin film side and give it a quick spike so that when I debulk it the air will be able to get out put the bag back on there's an awful lot of bag on bag off with prepreg every couple layers needs to be debulked and that's a super important step skipping on debulking is a terrible idea so I'll press this down and come back over it with the heat gun just to let the resin flow a little bit. Here's a quick look at the glue film. This is SA80 Gurit glue film. Um, it has a scrim inside it which is called supported glue film and you can buy glue film unsupported which just looks like this little bit at the edge that has no scrim. It's super hard to deal with but saves the weight of the scrim and is a little more flexible but Scrim doesn't add much weight and it makes it a lot easier to handle. So now I'm taking that debulk bag off again, setting the mesh aside, and I'll pull back the backer to explode, expose that glue film. Nice piece of 15 millimeter honeycomb. And to support the edge of the honeycomb, I'm putting a little wood frame around the edge. Um, this wood I had found outside and it was moist and that turned out to be a problem in the cook because I got a lot of vapor but uh, it worked okay you need that around the edge or else the vacuum will collapse the, the honeycomb cells in and here's the second skin going on glue film against the core and I'm going to give this a quick debulk just to press it into the honeycomb before I come back and put the top skin and the processed materials for the bag stack on. If you have a bigger debulk bag, when you take it off you can put the backer from the Teflon. It makes a really nice tape, comes on and off easily. Here I'm putting, just protecting the corners so that the bag doesn't get popped this uh, wood frame is now pressed down really nicely into that slightly larger layer of RC200 that was the first ply and so now I'm gonna put the final ply of this RC200 woven peel the backer off this stuff would normally be much less stiff at say 65 or 70 Fahrenheit room temperature here it's just cold So I'll get to tack down and trim off the excess. I'd cut these a little big, but I'll save that for something. I'm cutting it back just inside the wood frame so there's a little bit of exposed honeycomb, just so that as the moisture in the wood boils off, it's not gonna get stuck in there. Wood is not a great choice for a perimeter, but it's what I had. Um, better to have something that's um, a little less wet. So I taped it off, covered everything up there, and now you can see how the whole stack is, the peel ply stuck down nicely. And I'm going to apply just a regular bleed stack. This is P3 release film, stuck down with a little bit of spray adhesive, a little bit of drip here and there. The spray adhesive is not great, but it doesn't, not going to be a big deal here and then some thin four ounce breather fabric try and make sure not to have any wrinkles in any of this stuff because those will print into the carbon and I want the breather to cover all of the perimeter by bits so now I'm going to poke little holes in the top skin to let any moisture in the core out I made a nice grid here so you can being systematic and uh, you, so you can see what I'm up to. They're about on two inch slash 50 millimeter centers. The holes are about one and a half millimeters in diameter. A better system would be to drill them with something like a finishing nail, but in this case I was using a carbide scribe that I had found right at hand. And um, a little quick and dirty, but the holes 
if you're doing something big, this can be a pretty tedious but super important task. You're drilling those holes in there. So I'm going to lose the debulk bag, fold over all the edges of the breather, doubling them up on the wood frame to protect the bag, grab some vacuum fittings, put them down. I've got two. One will be for a gauge and the other will be for the vacuum inlet. And I'm going to put the bag down. Got the tacky tape on the bag and I've cut back the Teflon around the edge. That was a fresh sheet of Teflon on that little table. And um, I hadn't cut it back yet, but that's really important. If you try and put the tacky tape the sealant on the Teflon, it'll slide around as soon as you get it hot and come undone and then you'll have all kinds of trouble. So keeping the bag nice and symmetrical, putting the pleats right where the edge of the panel drops off. So I've got a little extra bag there. I like to tack the corners down and then come back and, and work it out uh, very systematically. But um, going to use the scissors to chop out the middle of the bag to put the back fitting through. Trying to make sure there are no wrinkles between the plate and the gasket. And do the other one. I'll come back and tighten these down once the bag is sucked down. So there I have a bag. If there were heavier lamina, I might put some in flow mesh over the top. But here the breather will be fine. And this is just one thermocouple to monitor the surface temperature. And don't look too close, but here's my quick and dirty oven. Um, I don't recommend this. You can't go far from it. It is definitely a fire hazard. Don't do this. But I have, yeah, that's a wire knot. Um, it's a little PID controller but it worked okay and I cooked it with a fairly standard cure profile a little quick because I was in a hurry got up to 100 C for four hours there's some bleed but not too much and now I'm gonna take it apart pull the thermocouple off take the bag off and the bag doesn't really want to come but um, that's good. So I'll work that off. I found I take the fittings off immediately and that way I'm less likely to throw them out. So there's the top skin and the peel plies. I'll leave the peel ply on it to trim it up just because I'm used to doing that and it protects it. I'm going to sharpen a stir stick so I'm not going to try not to damage the Teflon um, when I pry it up. Having the wood frame on here is super nice. You can lean on the wood frame, which is nice and strong and bonded to the bottom skin. So when you're wedging up the panel, you don't have to worry about crushing the honeycomb. You've got that sacrificial perimeter bit that you can really uh, lean on. Once I get it started, take my wedge stick and move it down. and use some other stir sticks just to prop it up. It comes pretty easily. The Teflon releases really nicely. Got to watch out. I'm all shy here because I don't want to get a shock. Releasing carbon from carbon. That little table is a, a carbon pre break table with honeycomb aluminum core. And um, it's really nice, but you can get a nasty shock from demolding this. The panel came out really nice. There's no porosity on the, the tool surface and the top looks nice. You can see all the places where I perforated. I probably perforated a bit aggressively, but it worked. Everything is nicely bonded. And this is a look at the mold side. Gave a really nice finish. That initial warm debulk and uh, heat gunning probably helped. All the core bonds were really nice nice little fillets of glue no air against the honeycomb cells and very satisfying pulling the peel ply and this is the final panel the weight came out just about exactly where the estimate said it would come and that's it thanks for checking out the explore composites materials library